Now, depression in children and adolescents, it stresses that psychosocial interventions are recommended in the initial treatment based on literature and local clinical experience. Psychosocial interventions and medications have been shown to be useful and uh, psychosocial interventions include supervision, monitoring by the doctor, engaging in support networks, VWOs like Porsche, um, Silver Ribbon and other VWOs as mentioned, working with the schools and the use of psychological treatments of which CBT and interpersonal therapy are recommended. So medication should not be the only treatment modality for children and adolescents. One must also pay attention to self-esteem issues, coping skills, adaptation to changes and relationships in these patients. But medications are also indicated in the case of severe depression or if there is presence of psychotic symptoms or if the patient fails to respond to psychotherapy. SSRI should be used with caution because of uh, suicidal ideation, as I mentioned earlier on. And of the SSRIs, only fluoxetine has been approved by the US and UK regulatory bodies. There are reports of increased suicidal thinking with paroxetine. In fact, nowadays, uh, patients are very well informed. I have an adult patient whom I wanted to prescribe paroxetine who told me he, they, they googled in the internet and found paroxetine is also associated with suicidal thinking. This is an adult patient. And they asked me about it and uh, they said, I don't want to take paroxetine. Can you give me something else? What about combination? Combination psychosocial interventions and SSRIs may be considered for moderate to severe depression, grade A and level 1 plus evidence. Venlafaxine, given very high rating for children and adolescents. For adults, it is uh, not really uh, that high a rating, interestingly. Uh, so that's a second line treatment. Now, previous CPG stated that TCAs and MAOIs, and also mentioned that venlafaxine may not be so effective. So, but this uh, recent CPG seems to advocate very strongly the use of venlafaxine in children and adolescents. But I think you have to get a formulation of medication of the drug with a low enough dosage because if you start with 75, I don't think many of our local children, adolescents, or even adults can uh, tolerate the side effects. Okay. And uh, I have a lot of problem with my pharmacist in SGH because they say you cannot cut the tablet, it's an XR formulation, and yet uh, in this guidelines it says 37.5 milligrams. So I think it's a bit difficult, tough one. We would like to give the 37.5, not 75. Now, when do we refer to the child psychiatrist? When we refer when there's failure to improve with psychosocial interventions or if you think the child requires specialized psychological interventions. If there's failure to improve after four weeks of antidepressant treatment at maximum tolerated dosages, or if the child is suicidal and is disruptive in their behavior and there are psychotic symptoms, hearing voices and having delusions. So this is under GPP, a yeah? good practice point. Uh, I may or may not talk about this one because my next speaker will talk about all talk to you about, about uh, depression in pregnancy and perinatal psychiatry, so I maybe leave it to Dr. Helen Chen, okay? These two slides, uh, three slides, but it's in your CPG anyway, depression in pregnancy. The, this CPG talks about scales for children and adolescents, rating scales, uh, CESD, CDI, I've not seen these myself, but some of these were actually uh, um, written by our local people, formulated by our local, I'm not sure which one is it, uh, ACDS or which one, which one is it. Uh. But you see the PHQ makes an appearance here, the PHQ 9 for adults, and PHQ 2 has uh, also appeared here for children. Okay, our child psychiatrists have formulated one of these scales here, uh, Professor Daniel Fang and his colleagues. For the adults, uh, they are screening tools Hamilton scale, HMD, uh, HADS, HADS, Madras, the back, and the PHQ-9. These are screening tools that tell you how severe the depression is. Of these tools, number one and number three are observer-rated. That means they are clinician-rated. 
The rest are self-rated. You can get a patient to fill these in themselves. Huh? The, these uh, scales are validated for use in Singapore. There's a Chinese version of the heads as well. Um, CGI, the Clinical Global Impression Rating Scale, is very useful for monitoring improvement to treat with treatment. And there are actually two main questions, uh, severity as well as global improvement. Sorry for the typo here. Severity and global improvement. Each of these questions has got seven possible responses. So with that, I end my talk, and I shall pass you over to the next speaker, Dr. Helen Chen from the KK Hospital, who will talk to you about depression and schizophrenia in the perinatal period. Thank you very much.